On a bright Sunday morning in December of 1984, over 300 people gathered in New Orleans City Park to participate in the third annual Peace Sunday March. Good morning. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Jerry Walsh. Okay. Is this uh, your uh, you're a participant in this march? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Is this the first time you participated in the no, Peace Sunday? Uh, uh, once before. So why? Uh, what what prompted you to come out? Be, keep coming out uh, year after year for this march. What uh, What are you? Uh, for peace, of course. Good morning. What's What's your name? My name is uh, Darrell Wiley. Okay. I notice you're wearing a Peace Sunday T-shirt. Are you involved in organizing this event? Or? Uh, no, I'm not involved in organizing the event. I'm just here uh, celebrating, like I did last year, trying to make sure people are aware of the the multifarious issues of peace. Mm -hmm. So, and that's your purpose is to try and spread public awareness of the. Yes, uh, spread public awareness and just make a political statement. Uh -huh. So what do you feel once you've made your statement and you've increased people's awareness, what would you like to see people do once they've got this heightened awareness? Well, uh, what I'd like to see people do, there's a petition going around talking to scrap one nuclear warhead and put that money into New Orleans human needs, and I think that's what we need to do. My name is Sister Marty Kevers. Oh. I think a march like this... Um, speaks to people in so far as they see that that there are those who who feel it's a value and even though they cannot get out and march that it somehow says to their conscience think a little bit before you move right. decide where you're going to put your money where you're going to put your values and even if they kind of mock the whole situation yeah. it does say something to them it brings to their awareness the fact mm -hmm. that there is this need But uh, you're here for the Peace Sunday March? Absolutely. Right. Are you, what, what are your reasons for coming out today? Why are you participating in this event? Well, the Peace Sunday uh, Coalition has, an, has broached a number of issues which I'm concerned about, mm -hmm. which I think, and I've been advocating for some time, should be discussed in the same paragraph. Mm -hmm. War, uh, the, the avoidance of war, uh, our foreign policy, and uh, our domestic policy as it relates to fulfilling the human needs of people. Mm -hmm. That's all in the same ball of wax. We've got we to gotta discuss it together. We've got to deal with it together. It has right. to be a holistic program. Right. And in order to make any kind of change in this, we have to begin to mount uh, a popular movement in this country, mm -hmm. like the civil rights movement of the 60s, right. Right. Uh, led by poor people and uh, joined with the, by their supporters. Right. And, and this is a meaningful step. Right. Hi. Hello. Good morning, sir. What, uh, what, what's your name, sir? Stuart Butler. Stuart Butler. Okay, you're out here uh, participating in the Peace Sunday campaign? Yes, I am. Okay, why, why are you here? What, what is your purposes? What do you feel that you're accomplishing by coming out here today? Well, I'm an activist in the uh, gay movement mm -hmm. and the New Orleans Regional Chapter of LAGPAC, which is the Louisiana Gay Political Action Caucus, mm -hmm. voted to participate in mm -hmm. Peace Sunday. Mm -hmm. So what prompted you to come out here for the first time to be involved in an event like this? Well, I believe in peace, mm -hmm. and I think this is one way to get it, is for everyone to come together to represent their individual views. Everyone's out here for a different reason, possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe they represent different organizations, mm -hmm. but we all have the same thing in mind, mm -hmm. and that's respect and dignity for the individual, and that's mm -hmm. why we're out here. Participants moved down Orleans Avenue toward Armstrong Park, chanting slogans and singing songs as local residents watched on. Okay, ma'am, would you mind giving us your name? And Naomi Woodard. Okay, Ms. Woodard, you were standing here this march passed through your neighborhood and was wondering about what your reaction is to it. Uh, what peace. I am peace, definite for peace. 
So you agree with the purposes of the of march? The march, definitely. Right. I do, very right. much so. And do you feel marches like this accomplish something towards? In a sense, yes. Mm -hmm. I hope they do accomplish what they out for. All right, so excuse me, would you mind giving us your name? John Woodard. Okay, so you saw this march pass through your neighborhood. What are your reactions to it? Over? Well, I didn't uh, have any real reaction. I just, it was unusual uh -huh. to be strange and so forth. But, um, um, well, they, they didn't make, it wasn't a, you know, a radical protest. It just mm -hmm. seemed like they were voicing their opinion on subject. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, you know, that's what America's all about. Yeah. What, what, how do you feel about the purposes of the march? Do you feel it's accomplishing something towards the cause of peace? or? Uh, not really. I mean, it's not. It's not the place for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless what well, they weren't recognized in this area uh -huh. at all. So you know, didn't accomplish too much. Uh -huh. What What do you think? What do you think, in your opinion? What do you think is the most effective thing that people can do if they want to promote the the cause of peace? Well, the best thing to do is uh, you know, make the politicians aware of it. Uh -huh. That's uh, that's where the power is at in the government. Right. So you make them aware of it. The procession wound its way through the French Quarter, where Bourbon Street tourists expressed mixed reactions. Okay, excuse me, sir, do you mind giving us your name? Okay, my name is Ian Marquand from Helena, Montana. Helena, Montana, all right, you come far away. You saw this march passing by, and do you have any reactions to it? Or? It, seemed like, uh, it seemed like there was a lot of different types of people in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure what it what it was all about. Uh, I guess it was you know, mostly a peace march. Yeah. There uh, seemed to be a lot of different different sorts of feelings being expressed in it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think marches like this accomplish anything? Or I'm not really sure. I guess I kind of grew up after the the main Vietnam thing, and I remember in college we used to have marches for one mm -hmm. thing or another, and I don't know. I, I sort of felt at that time that it was more for the for the marchers. Than, than for the public, and I guess it's more curiosity for people that are watching. Uh, I'm not really sure if maybe we haven't moved on beyond that type of, of, of demonstration, but uh, you know, it certainly gets gets it out in the public. Dave, okay, you saw this March Peace Sunday march passing by. What are your reactions to it? The block traffic. Rounding out the march, demonstrators entered Armstrong Park for a program staged in historic Congo Square. In the preceding years, Peace Sunday focused on the issue of nuclear war. This year, march organizers broadened the scope of the march to include four themes, peace, justice, equality, and unity. Selby Samela, an exiled South African student leader during the 1976 Soweto uprising, spoke on the theme of equality, focusing on the apartheid system of South Africa. The state of affairs is explosive in South Africa. The white minority, illegal, illiterate, backward government of South Africa is under attack, both at home and out here. And we are committed to keeping things that way. Some of you, if some of you have been following the news lately, you, have, you might have noticed all the demonstrations and protests taking place throughout the country at South Africa's consulates and embassies. The system of apartheid is outdated. The system of apartheid does not belong to in this century. That system has to go, and we will make sure that it goes. Like I said, this government, this racist minority government, is committed to violence. They've proved it to us in the past that they'll do anything to keep us down by, by the use of violence. I mean, these people have had over 300 years to, to practice, to be human. They failed the test in over 300 years. It's time to go. 
and we'll make sure that they go. Yeah. We know right now they, you know, they are enjoying a lot of support from, the, from overseas, from this country. This government is partly responsible for what is going on in South Africa because this country is still going, still supporting, giving South Africa, the, you know, the economic aid and military support despite what the, UN, what the United Nations has suggested. So what we are saying to you people is that while there is still time, while there is still time, you people, you can do something, you know, this is your government. You can tell your government what, you know, that it should get out of South Africa. Stop supporting that backward government because you know, if nothing is done, there will be a time, there will be a time in the near future whereby to have a white skin will be of great disadvantage to those people living there. We don't want to see this happen, but if nothing is done, it will happen. Reverend S.L. Harvey of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. We would like to say to you that some time ago, we sent letters all over to the governor, the mayor, and Mr. Spoonie, and everybody concerning uh, South Africa coming into New Orleans. And we said to them, if they come, we would pick at them. So we, keep, we was able to keep them out. A group of North Americans who had recently returned from a tour of Nicaragua joined the stage with an El Salvadoran refugee who chose to remain anonymous because of fear of reprisals in his homeland. He spoke of the political situation in El Salvador. In the name of my compatriots in exile, we think that it is very important to say to the North American people, Nuestra trágica y desesperante situación de nuestros compatriotas en El Salvador, así como nuestra situación en el extranjero. The tragic and desperate situation of our compatriots in El Salvador, the same as the situation of us in exile. La situación está de la siguiente manera. The situation is as follows. En este año, la Fuerza Aérea Salvadoreña ha realizado más de 400 bombardeos indiscriminados en contra de la población civil. In this uh, year, the armed forces of El Salvador have carried out more than 400 bombings on the self civilian Salvadoran population indiscriminately. Son más de 60 mil víctimas en los últimos años de guerra, cinco años de guerra civil. There have been more than 60,000 victims in the last five years of civil war. The threat of growing U.S. intervention in Central America was expressed by Sister Betty Campbell. We denounce, first of all, the war uh, that our government is sponsoring in El Salvador by sending down military aid to that government. Speaking on the issue of unity, veteran tenants' rights organizer Jim Hayes issued a challenge to the crowd. The only way that you're going to be able to attack racism in this country and in this city, that those of you who could call yourselves white organizers, that you got to go in those white communities and organize those white folks because they lost and they don't know it. And if you can't go in and organize white people and raise their consciousness about racism in America, then something is wrong. That's right. You ought to be on Napoleon. You ought to be over on Fun Blue, St. Charles, telling them white folks, y'all are racist. And you know what they'll tell you? They don't even know what it is. How many of you know what racism really is? The theme of peace was introduced by 95-year-old Elizabeth Rogers. Five reasons for peace. Why we should love the Soviet Union and stop listening to our military industrial dictatorship which gives us a new lie or a new slander every year since 1917, each time worse and meaner and harder. We don't have to listen to them. We can read, and we damn well better begin. Continuing the theme of peace, Reverend James Stovall of the Louisiana Inner Church Council. I don't particularly like 
to get out on Sunday afternoons. I like to stay home and visit with my daughters and play with my grandchildren. But I'm here today, and I'm glad to be here because I want to show my interest in what you're doing and the commitment of the churches to working for peace. And I congratulate each of you on being here and the work that you're doing for peace in our nation and in our world today. Nuclear war is the most urgent problem facing humankind today. There are two things I want to say about it. The first is this. Nuclear war is the single most urgent problem because nuclear warfare can destroy all life on this planet. Now, a week ago, that might have seemed a little overdramatic. But a week ago today in India, two workers left a valve open and some poisonous gas escaped and 2,000 people were killed and thousands upon tens of thousands more are debilitated and disabled and sick and homeless. Now, just think what happens when the nuclear warheads are released for the purpose of killing and destroying human life. When World War II ended, I was on the island of Saipan out of the Pacific with the 2nd Marine Division. We were training and preparing to invade the main island of Japan. Because we were in combat readiness, we went aboard ship almost immediately and went to the city of Nagasaki. And you may recall that the second of the atomic bombs was dropped on the island of Nagasaki, a city of approximately 100,000 people. Well, 75,000 of those were killed with one bomb, one bomb. And so I say to you that I know from experience and observation the great tragedy that can be caused by nuclear warfare. As the program concluded, participants in Peace Sunday vowed to return again in the near future to take their issues to the hearts of the people through the streets of New Orleans. For peace, of course.